Hi, um, so I'm Cheryl Joy Lipton. Uh, I'm a landscape designer and I'm an ecologist. I'm very glad about this symposium going on now because it is going to bring to light to the masses the terrible injustice of burning biomass. In other words, burning trees for um, energy or anything is egregious in this time of um, climate change and climate crisis and biodiversity crisis and water. Trees and forests are there to help us survive and live in a healthy way and to burn them up is doing the exact opposite. People are not being honest about the actual damage that happens when we burn biomass especially for electricity. It's bad for our health, for human health and health of the forest and all of the other biota that lives there. Um, and it's bad for climate. It, it puts more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than burning coal does. And um, it's, it's a well-known fact that burning anything is other than wood is less damaging to both the climate and to the um, to uh, the environment. The forestry industry uh, is so strong, and the wood products industry is so strong in Vermont and in many places that um, people think that it is good to keep it local, or you know, and, and it's not. It's causing more and more damage. It's just as bad to burn our forests here as it is to cut down the rainforest in the Amazon or other rainforests. As a matter of fact, Vermont, and I'm talking about not just McNeil and burning biomass for, um, for electricity, but Vermont is the ha burns the most amount of wood of any state in the entire nation. And we put more particulate matter, fine particulate matter, which is 2.5 um, particulate matter, into the air than any other state in, in the country. Per capita, per capita. Jared uh, Omer of the Vermont uh, Department of Health has given a good testimony on that to both the Vermont Climate Council and also to the Senate Natural Resources um, Committee expressly saying that burning biomass, burning wood, is bad for the health of, of humans. And the, um, the, de the Department of Health suggests not to do that. Um, the American Pediatric Asso uh, Association suggests not. The Lung American Lung Association uh, asks to stop burning wood, and this includes the um, high-efficiency um, wood, new wood burners. This includes pellet stoves. This includes pellet uh, burners that they're putting, that, that Vermont is encouraging schools and municipalities to put in for their municipal buildings. These are all very unhealthy, and uh, in the winter, when the when the wood is being burned, the air quality is greatly decreased. I'm Zach Porter. I'm the executive director of Standing Trees. Here at Burlington City Hall today to educate uh, city councilors and the uh, residents of Burlington about the perils of biomass electricity. Um, residents of Burlington have been fooled for going on four decades now into thinking that biomass electricity is a part of a uh, clean energy future for Vermont, for our planet. And we're here to set the record straight because uh, the science is very clear that biomass electricity is actually worse than even coal for electricity generation. It's absolutely taking us in the wrong direction and it's polluting our cities and, and it's a public health menace. It's also uh, destroying the water quality of our rivers and, and beloved Lake Champlain. Um, and it is threatening the biodiversity of our forests. So uh, biomass has all of these problems and it's time for Burlington to look for truly low carbon energy solutions. In Vermont, um, 
we're so accustomed to, you know, wood heat, um, you know, and, and thinking, of, thinking of our forest as an energy source. And there's a big difference between, you know, even wood heat and biomass electricity. Biomass electricity requires heating to incredibly hot temperatures, and it's incredibly inefficient to burn green wood, as anyone who burns wood in Vermont knows. And what we're doing is we're burning green wood in a massive boiler uh, to create electricity. And the efficiency of our power plants here are worse than coal-fired power plants for creating electricity. So for every four trees that are burned in the McNeil biomass power plant, just one contributes to electricity. The McNeil power plant is a far better producer of carbon than it is of electricity. So it's a real dinosaur of a power plant. And it's, it's it's ancient technology that, that we need to move off of and move towards something that's truly low carbon. We can't keep living in this myth that it's renewable or that um, it's a you know, sustainable fuel source. What we need is low carbon energy and biomass is anything but. So today we have two global experts, Bill Muma of Tufts and uh, Dr. Uh, Juliet Rooney Varga of UMass Lowell. Um, who are among the world's leading scientists on climate and on biomass, and they're here to help educate city councilors and the public about the perils of McNeil biomass, um, which is Vermont's single largest source of carbon pollution. And the city of Burlington has somehow tried to magically greenwash for four decades now, claiming that it's carbon neutral. Um, and we know that that's just not the case, and we can't keep fooling ourselves into, you know, thinking that anymore. So, to, to feed this massive wood boiler at, at McNeil requires an incredible amount of wood, and literally tens of thousands of acres a year are required to feed the. Um, uh, you know, McNeil Biomass Power Plant. The Telephone Gap Project um, on the Green Mountain National Forest targets almost 12,000 acres of very mature forest, some of the healthiest forests in the state of Vermont. And from those forests, from state forests like Camel's Hump um, State Forest and, and many others around the state, we are shipping our mature, healthy forests here to be burned in, in, at the McNeil Power Plant. So there's a direct connection between what's going on in our public forests um, and what's happening here in, in Burlington with McNeil. Of course, private forest lands provide a lot of the, the, the timber supply also, but the presence of a biomass power plant creates incentives for really poor forest management practices because it, 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 it really uh, encourages loggers and landowners to strip forests of really important standing dead wood and woody debris on the forest floor, uh, trees that may not be perfectly straight and tall, but are extremely important from a biodiversity perspective, from a climate perspective, get stripped from our forests and brought to McNeil to be burned because they can't be turned into saw logs. So what it does is it, it creates a market for wood that would otherwise be left in our forest. And that's a real problem from a water quality perspective because that wood would trap water as it's falling down, you know, from the increasingly extreme rainfall events and, and uh, warm ups after large snowfalls. You know, that woody debris in the forest prevents our rivers from flooding. Um, and instead we're removing all of that and taking it here to be burned. So it's, it's a terrible incentive for um, you know, the, the very worst of our uh, logging practices and forests. And uh, again, we, we need to get rid of it for, for all of these reasons, not, not even just the climate reason. Our forests can't, can't keep pace with the amount of emissions that you know, we're putting out there from any source of, of, of carbon, whether that's uh, you know, wood burning or fossil fuel burning. Um, but our forests do an incredible job. Today, you know, Vermont's forests um, sequester a, a, an incredible amount of uh, the emissions that we put up into the atmosphere every year, but they could do a lot more if we simply let them grow old. And there are very few Vermont forests that are allowed to grow old. My name is Dan Castrogano. I live in Burlington. I'm an educator and a community organizer here today to call on the city of Burlington and BED to stop burning trees for electricity. 
Uh, we need a phase out plan for McNeil. Burning trees uh, produces more pollution than coal, um, unit for unit. Um, and just calling the city of Burlington to stop greenwashing, to say, uh, saying things like it's renewable or it's carbon neutral or it's green. So uh, we need these trees standing right now because of the climate and ecological emergency. We need a phase out plan for McNeil. Uh, there are a lot of things that they don't talk about or they might not talk about tonight. So uh, the impact of biogenic emissions in the first place, uh, the impact of carbon being released from the soil when trees are clear cut, the impact on water quality or air quality or the extinction crisis. These are all these things that just are simply not acknowledged by the city of Burlington or by the electric department. And we need a different plan. So we need wind, solar, geothermal. We need to weatherize everything uh, and we need to just use less energy as a species. And so pouring more capital into this district heating plan and basically keeping McNeil online for a long time is a terrible idea. We need, an, we need a phase out plan, we need an end date, and we need to stop burning trees for electricity. Thank you. Uh, I'm Steve Goodkind. I am the retired city engineer and public works director for the city of Burlington. And I'm um, here tonight to encourage the city to begin to look real hard at the McNeil plant and its wood burning. I call the McNeil plant the McNeil carbon dioxide generating plant because it actually generates a pound of carbon dioxide for every pound of wood that it burns. It's, it did its job back in the day. It helped us fight the Arab oil embargo, but its time is way past. And in an age where climate change is important, the burning of wood is probably the worst, worst fuel we can be using at this point in time. So I think it's time for McNeil to begin to look to phase out, close down, and not to expand its use and continue its use into the future by running a steam pipe up to the hospital or whatever. It's time to, to phase it out and not uh, increase its use. We can have all the benefits of good forest management without burning it in the McNeil plant and probably do even a better job if we didn't burn it. Burning is the worst way to use wood and the worst way to burn wood is in a factory type of setting like the McNeil plant which is only 25 percent efficient. So it's really just taking a bad fuel and making the worst use of it and creating literally the most carbon dioxide per pound per kilowatt of energy created of almost any other fuel you could think of. You don't need McNeil wood to have a healthy forest products industry in Vermont. You just do not. And they're trying to sell it that way also, but you don't. And there's other better uses, uses that actually fight climate change, that can use, use the wood that McNeil is using, even the so-called scrap wood that they're using. That can be put to a much better use and actually not emit carbon dioxide, but be in the battle to prevent emissions by using it for insulation or for wood products. Much better use. Time to close it down, start closing it down.
everyone, my name is Scott Zenz. I live in Thetford and Stratford, Vermont, it, over in Orange County, and uh, I have training as a silviculture uh, professional. Uh, I have done timber supply analyses for the state of Washington, for the whole state, long-term estimates of timber supply. Uh, and I have a PhD in forest ecology as well. Um, my big concerns about uh, Burlington Electric's uh, expansion into district heating is that it is going to uh, make permanent in our community uh, a pattern, a structural pattern that we shouldn't participate in. The very worst use of a top of a tree or the limbs of a tree are to burn them in McNeil. Because when we do that, we give up the carbon sequestration and we lose the nutrients in the soil. When this pattern has been uh, implemented in other areas in North America, forest productivity goes down. And it's that forest productivity that will lead us to have the strongest uh, carbon sequestration possible. What counts the most are the greenhouse gas emissions that come from burning things. It is not just fossil fuels, but also biofuels. And, you know, we cannot afford, our children cannot afford to use wood in this very expensive way for such low benefit. Anything that we do to help landowners keep their properties in forest would be a good thing. But we should not be using this mechanism, this terrible mechanism that produces such greenhouse gas emissions. Those, the real slash that comes from the residues that are left over from harvesting need to stay where they are. And the high quality forest products that come from our forests, we treasure and will keep. And in that way, the carbon that gets stored in those trees gets kept out of the atmosphere. We need forestry in the state of Vermont, but we cannot afford to be burning it. Thank you. At one dollar a ton, the public policy initiative to pay landowners to leave residual material on site will be very affordable. Because the cost to our society of the releasing those greenhouse gas emissions is so high. I have to say it again, the very worst use of a piece of wood is to burn it in McNeil. Yeah, it is so inefficient. And it, it is very likely more efficient to burn wood at the hospital than it is to pipe the steam there. It is way too hot oh. to travel over long distances. such a long, large pipeline, it reduces the efficiency of McNeil down almost to single digits. That is, that is worse by an order of magnitude than almost every other way to produce electricity.
Burlington resident and a ratepayer um, of Burlington Electric, and I have been um, very upset by the level of misinformation that um, Burlington Electric puts forth on their website, and um, it really ratepayers' expense. They have a very effective, um, essentially, propaganda arm that provides misinformation around biomass burning at McNeil. And um, a lot is said about electricity from McNeil being 100% renewable. Um, and it's one of, you know, it's one of those terms. It sounds great. Um, and we don't know what that means, renewable. It really depends upon who is using the word and how they're defining it. And in the case of McNeil, it does not acknowledge carbon emissions. And if you care about climate, um, you need to be concerned about carbon emissions. We don't really care about renewability. We um, don't care about where the carbon is coming from. So McNeil, for example, in their net zero energy plan, they, um, Burlington Electric is wanting to reduce and eventually eliminate fossil fuel use. Great, but it's only half the story. We really need to be concerned not about strictly fossil fuel use, we need to be concerned about carbon emissions. And when you have something like wood that emits one and a half times the amount of CO2 as coal burning, and you are simultaneously removing the very things, the trees that are sequestering the carbon, that are supporting biodiversity and clean water, um, you know, it just, I, I really, tonight, when I was speaking, I really was angry and I, I had it with the greenwashing and I was upset by the false equivalency that we've all grown so accustomed to around discussions of climate change, where you have the scientists and you have the deniers and they're given equal, um, equal consideration and equal time before the camera. And I think we saw that tonight. Um, the fact that Tuke is doing this. I truly, truly in my heart appreciate it. What I don't appreciate is that false equivalency. Um, so you have the absurdity of two world-renowned scientists um, juxtaposed against biomass promoters. And um, so that was, as a mom who is just concerned about ecological collapse, um, get angry sometimes and that's um, so that's why it wasn't my finest moment speaking but it had to be said and um, I'm certainly glad to have the venue and I hope it leads to more conversations because we are about to sink 42 million dollars into district heat they call it it's not a district it's a steam pipe running from McNeil to UVM Medical Center that will increase the amount of wood that's burned at McNeil and thus increase carbon emissions. So that's uh, that's what we need to be focusing on is that problem that will um, that will ensure that McNeil uh, plant that needs to be mothballed is um, standing for many decades to come. So that that's something that needs to be shut down right away. We need to get the truth out about that project. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say right now because we've got to go home uh, to our sweet 10-year-old boy. Thank you.